Hello friends, in this video, in this session, we are going to complete the third part of closer look at methods and classes. So, all remaining topics will be covered in this chapter. First topic is introducing nested and inner classes. It is possible to define a class within another class. Such classes are known as nested classes. So, one class can be defined in another class. The scope of nested class is bounded by the scope of its enclosing class. So whatever class you are nesting that is inside class is bounded by the so scope of its out, out class. If class B is defined within a class A, then B does not exist independently of A. The nested class gets access to the members including private members of the class in which it is nested. So inner class will have always have access to the all members including private members of its outer class. However, enclosing class does, does not have access to the members of the nested class. So outer class does not have access to the members including private of the inner class. Nested class that is declared directly within its enclosing class scope is a member of its enclosing class. So, like in a class, we define members like uh, integer member, float, double, and boolean, etc. etc. So, if you are in, in entering a new class into a class, that class also a member of that enclosing class. And also, it is possible to declare a nested class that is local to a block local to a particular block there are two types of nested classes static and non-static static nested class is the one that has a static modifier applied static nested class will have static keyword preceded because it is static it must access the members of its enclosing class through an object and since it is declared as static it must access the members of its enclosing class that is the outer class through an to the object. It cannot refer to members of its enclosing class directly, only through use of objects. Because of this restriction, static nested classes are seldom used, very rarely used, because in, in, inside class cannot have access to its members of enclosing class through without using an object so that it, they are used very rarely. The most important type of nested class is the inner class. Inner class is a non-static nested class. It has access to all the variables and methods of its outer class and may refer them directly in the same way that another, another non-static members of the outer class do. Now we will see one program to define and use an inner class. How we will use an inner class. The class name outer has one instance variable name outer x, one instance name method name text, and defines one inner class called inner. <laughs> one class outer is defined. Integer outer x is equal to 100. While test in that test method, inner is equal to new inner inner dot display. So now we will define that inner class that is called over here. Inner class has one method display. Display outer x is equal to outer x. Class inner class demo. In that I am defining outer outer is equal to new outer and outer dot test. So while this case we in this case we are creating one method test. In that test we are creating object of inner class and display. So what is this display? Contains display outer x. And outer x is displayed over here 100. And in the inner class demo that is having main function, we are creating object of the outer class. So whenever you are calling or creating object of the outer class, then only you can access the inner classes method. So inside outer you are defining inner. So whatever that is included in the inner cannot be accessed without creating object of the outer class. 
this is the output outer x is equal to 100 inner class name inner is defined within the scope of class outer therefore any code that is written in a class inner can directly access and variable outer x so inner classes can access the variable in outer class and instance method name display is defined inside inner this method displays outer x on the standard output stream like all other system dot outer print the main method of inner class demonstrates the instance of outer class and invokes this test method after that it creates the instance of an inner class inside and the display method of inner class is called it is important very important thing that instance of inner class can be created only within the scope of class outer inner class does not exist without existence of outer so whenever you are creating object of outer class then only you can access the inner class method and variables the java compiler generates an error message if you if any code outside of class outer attempt to instantiate the class inner. so you is the inside a class that is declared cannot be accessed by any code outside of the class outer in general, inner class instance must be created by an enclosing scope. You can, however, create an instance of class inner outside of outer by qualifying its name with outer as in outer inner. You can create instance of a inner outside of outer. How? By qualifying its name like this, outer dot inner. So without outer, you cannot use the inner one. A inner class has access to all the members of its enclosing class, but reverse is not true. Reverse is not true in such a case that without existence of outer, you cannot create, you cannot use the inner class methods and variables, but they cannot directly access them, including private members. An inner class can have access to all the members of its outer class. Members of inner class are known only within the scope of inner class and may not be used by the outer class. Within the scope is as such. Within the scope means inside our inner inside the outer class. Members of the inner class only within the scope of inner class and may not be used by outer class. So let's see one example. Outer X is defined here as 100. The test method is created. Inner, inner is equal to new inner, inner dot display. Now, Y is declared as instance variable of inner. Thus, it is not known outside of that class and it cannot be used by show Y. Although we have been focusing on inner classes declared as members within an outer class scope, it is possible to define inner classes with that within any block of scope. We have been focusing on inner classes declared as members within an outer class scope that is inside outer class. It is possible to define inner classes within any block of scope. For example, you can define an nested class within a block defined by member, member, method, or even within the body of for loop as this next program will show. Inner class within a for loop. Now, for more class outer is created, outer x is equal to 100. So, inside for loop, we are creating class inner void display, display outer x. So, 10 times 10, 10 uh, inside the 10 times for loop, class inner is created. And after that, inner inner is equal to new inner and inner dot display. Now, this is the inner class demo outer outer is equal to new outer. Then, output of this version of program is shown here outer x 10 times outer dot test after outer dot test is created. For 10 times, this class is created class inner and it is displaying the uh, method uh, displaying the display outer x 10 times so output is 10 times outer x so you can directly write uh, inner class inside for loop while nested classes are not applicable to all situations they are particularly helpful when handling events when we will see we will be seeing the 
uh, event handling in Java, then we will be viewing that how nested classes are important in Java. There you will be see. There you will see how inner classes can be used to simplify the code needed to handle certain types of events. You will also learn about anonymous inner classes, which are inner classes that do not have any name. Nested classes were not allowed in Java 1.0. They were added by Java 1.1. Now, next topic is string class. Although the string class will be examined in the depth later, that is, we will be doing a separate string handling chapter in the upcoming sessions. A short explanation of what is string class and how it is operated upon, we will be seeing here. Because we will be using strings in some of the example programs shown towards the end of part one. That is, there are two parts of Java that are one uh, one part that we are covering, and at the end of this part, we will be using some string handling. So, at least we should have some introduction about a string. For that purpose, I have introduced here the string class. String is probably the most commonly used, most famous class in Java's class library. The obvious reason for this is that strings are an important part of programming. Without string, you cannot write a program usually. The first thing to understand about strings is that every string you create is actually object of type string. Very important point, double quoted, underlined. Every string you create is an object of type. It is not a group of characters like C and C++. Even string constants are actually string objects. Whatever string literals you are creating, those are also created as, treated as string objects. For example, this is a string 2. This is a string 2 is also a string constant. And it is also created, treated as string object. Object of type string are immutable. Once a string object is created, its contents cannot be altered. Very important line, double quoted, underline, take a note, notebook, take a paper and a pen and write down this line and remember this line thoroughly. This line, the, what does this line say? Once a string object is created, its contents cannot be altered. They are created only, only once. Whenever you are changing or modifying that string object, you are appending a string, you are cutting a string out from that particular string. Whatever new value is modified is stored in a new variable at a new memory location. Original string objects remain intact. While this may seem like a serious restriction, if it, it is not for two reasons. If you need to change, change a string, you can always create a new one that contains the modifications. Java defines a peer class of string called string buffer in which we can alter the string which allows to be strings to be altered all the uh, so all the all of the normal string manipulations are still available in java so how to construct a string what is the syntax to create a string object if this is string my string is equal to pc the test once you have created a string object you can use it anywhere that is string that string is allowed once you will create a string object, initialize it, you can use it anywhere, at any place that the string is allowed. For example, this statement displays my string, system dot output printer in my string. Java defines one operator for string object, it is used to concent concatenate two strings. I like Java, this is my string, results in my string containing I like Java. So plus or concatenation is operator is only and only operator that string modification can have. No any other operator overloading is allowed. So operator overloading has been introduced in the C++ if you have learned that C++ programming language. There operator overloading was there. But why operator overloading is omitted in Java? Why it is skipped in Java? Because the basic operations of, for example, addition, multiplication, division, subtraction, all these operations. If you are modifying them using or overloading those operators, the Java compiler gets confused about Java compiler gets confused about 
which operator over uh, which overloaded operator i should use so for that purpose to avoid this confusion only operator overloading that is plus concatenation operation and that too on string is allowed in java the following program demonstrates all the concepts that are related to string handling class string table for string second string is created as string object 1 string object 2 string object 3 string object 1 and string object 2 here three print and statements are there the output produced by this program is string first string is second first string second string first string and second string so first string second string are separate here and string object 3 is i have used the concatenation operation that will merge the strings first string and second string the output is displayed over here the string class contains several methods that you can use you can test two strings for equality by using equal you can write a notepad notebook or paper and pen you can write it down these are several methods that you can use two strings for equality by using equals you can obtain the length of a string by calling length method. You can obtain the character at a specified index within a string by calling caret function. The general forms of these three methods are shown here. First of all is equals boolean equals and you are passing string my object. Second is length method. It returns integer length in integer format and third is character character at integer index that for if that you are passing a particular index it will return character at that particular index there is a program that demonstrates these methods we have created two objects for string second string then string object 3 is copied value of string object 1 length of string object 1 string object 1 dot length character at index 3 so string object 1 at character at 3 3 is index 4 so fourth location character will be written and displayed at the second system dot out dot print length the string object 1 equals string object 2 that compares for equality it will return true or false First, we'll return false. Why? Because uh, first and second objects are not equal. First object is first string, and second object is second string. But object one and object three are equal because object three is initialized with object one itself. If string object one equals string object three, it will return and display the value. So output is length of string object 1 is 12 character at index 3 is string object 1 s so index string object 1's index 3 will give me s y because this is 0 character f first character i second character r third character s so third is a fourth location so it will return me s over here and First of all, string of object 1, string object 2 are not equal and string object 1, string object 3 are equal. You can have arrays of strings just like here. You can have arrays of any other type of object. So string array, example is here, string demo 3. String arrays have three values, 1, 2 and 3. And for that particular string length, I am iterating the for loop string of i is equal to string of r so it will output me string of 0 is 1 string of 1 is 2 string of 2 is 3 <coughs> <coughs> string arrays are important part of any many java program now command line arguments sometimes you want to pass information into a program when you run it when you are running the program you want to pass the information this is accomplished by passing command line arguments to main. Command line arguments give them information that directly follow the program's name or the command line when it is executed. So that information, whatever information you pass when you run the 
program by using java program's name on the command line that is called as command line argument when it is executed to access the command line argument inside a java program is easy they are stored as string in a string array passed to the args parameter of main so when you are writing public static void main and in brackets string args so those args are nothing but the command line arguments you pass by execution of program and they are stored as string in a string array so it is string array called args opening and close closing square bracket and whatever you are passing that will be stored as a string object the first line command line argument is stored at arc 0 second at arc 1 and so on for example the following program displays all of the command line arguments that it is called with so why uh, what i am running from integer i is equal to 0 i less than arcs length so this is the string arcs so this is the array string array for that particular this particular array's length i am iterating this for loop and i am displaying those arguments try execution of this program as shown here java command line this is a test 100 minus 1 when you do you will see the following output this is a test java command line why command line command line is the name of the class so how to run the program using command line java space name of the class space and all the arguments that you need so this is the this is a test 100 minus 1 so this is argument 0 is is arguments 1 a is arguments 2 test is arguments 3 and 100 is arguments 4 minus 1 is arguments 5 all these are passed as string even if these are Seem, this seems to be integers. You must convert in numeric values to their internal forms manually as explained in next chapter, upcoming chapter 16. <coughs> you must convert numeric values to their internal forms manually as explained in chapter 16. Now, the last topic is variable arguments, variable length arguments. Beginning with Java JDK 5, Java has included a feature that simplifies the creation of methods that need to take the variable number of arguments. This feature is called as variable var args and it is short for variable length arguments. The method that takes a variable number of arguments is called a variability method for a simply var args method. Whatever the method that will take a variable number of arguments starting with jdk5 is called a variable arity method or simply a varax method situations that require that a variable number of arguments be passed to a method are not unusual for example a method that opens the internet connection might take username password file name protocol and so on but supply defaults of if some of this information is not provided. So not every time username, password, file name, protocol, all these parameters are required. Some of the information may be confidential and for that purpose, user may not pass them as a parameter while opening internet connection. In this situation, it would be convenient to pass only the arguments to which the defaults did not apply. Another example is a printf method that is a part of Java's input output library. As you will see in the next chapters that is coming 18, it takes a variable number of arguments which it formats and then outputs. So not every time in printf, uh, number of arguments are equal. They can be variable. Prior to JDK 5, before JDK 5, variable length arguments could be handled two ways, neither of which was practically pleasing. First way was, if the maximum number of arguments was small and known, then you could create overloaded versions of the method. Like we have seen in method overloading, one for each way the method could be called. 
Although this works and is suitable for some cases, it applies to only narrow class of situations. What is the first condition? When maximum number of arguments were small and known, then you could create overloaded versions of that method one for each way the method could be fought. And this works and sometimes this works and sometimes it is suitable and it is but it is applying to only narrow class of situations. In classes where the maximum number of potential arguments was larger or unknowable, a second approach was used in which arguments were put into the array and then the array was passed to the method. So first was directly passing the arguments and second is uh, directly passing the array, storing the values by the array. Use an array to pass the variable number of arguments to a method. This is the pass array class. It has method static void v a test integer v. v is an array that is passed as a parameter. Number of arguments v dot length plus contents. For integer x colon v, for every x parameter in that v array, I am printing that x and new line. How array must be created to hold the arguments? Now, first array is having one element, then second array is having three elements, one, two, three, and third array is having no element. So, variable test n1, one argument, variable test n2, three arguments, variable test n3, no arguments. Output of the program. Now, for this particular element from this array, I am printing this x. So, I don't know how many elements each each uh, time user is passing or each time while execution of program, how many number of elements in that array present. So, for that purpose, I am writing this for like this. I don't know how many elements are there, so I am not giving here initialization, increment, decrement and condition part. I am only writing whatever there is there, it is an integer parameter, this much I know. Whatever the element, I give a name, it has x, colon and b is an array. b may be having 10 elements, 5 elements, 3 elements, 2 elements or no elements. And for this time, for this particular time, I am iterating this for me. So my uh, output is like this, number of args 1 contains 10, number of arguments 3 contains 1, 2, 3, number of arguments 0 contains no element. In the program, the method VA test is passed its arguments through an array V. V is an array. Its old style approach to variable length arguments does enable VA test to take an arbitrary number of arguments. Before a variable number of arguments was created in JDK 5. This is the old fashion. However, it requires that these arguments be manually packaged into an array prior to calling VA test. So every time I have to create the array with a multiple number of arguments and then I should pass them to a VA test. Not only this is tedious to construct an array each time VA test is called, it is potentially error prone. The Varax feature offers a simpler and better option. A variable length argument is specified by three periods. Here is how VA test is written using Varax. Static void VA test in three periods and then V. This syntax tells the compiler that VA test can be called with zero or a number of four arguments. So it is also simple as simple as that. As a result, V is this implicitly declared as an array of type int. So directly, what compiler will do? I am not providing here opening and closing square bracket. So directly, V is declared by compiler as an integer array. This is the type and this is the name of array and it directly provides opening and square bracket. Why? Because I am providing here three dots and telling that Number of arguments that I am passing to this method may be variable number of arguments. Inside a VA test, V is accessed during using the normal array syntax. Here is the preceding program using Varac. VA test now using Varac. This is the syntax we have seen. Number of arguments, V dot length and contents. For x, V, 
system dot outer filter is x and then new line. Now V A test ten, V A test one two three three arguments and V A test no arguments. The output from the program is the same as the original version. There are two important things to notice. You should write down about this about this program. First, as explained, inside V A test V is operated on as an array. This is because V is an array. Second, the syntax simply tells the compiler that variable number of arguments will be used and that these arguments will be stored in array referred to by V. I am passing the number of arguments, but those are variable number of arguments and that those arguments will be stored in the array referred to by V. Second, the main VA test is called with different number of arguments, increments, no ar including no arguments at all. The arguments are automatically put in an array and then passed to V. So in the previous example, before the ADK five one, I create uh, array separately and then I pass them to the method. But in this case, I don't have to create array manually. Arrays are automatically created and passed to V. In the case of no arguments, length of array is zero. Method can have normal parameters along with variable length parameter. However, the variable length parameter must be the last parameter declared by the method. So, you can have combination of fixed length parameter plus variable number of arguments. <coughs> so, <coughs> in this example, do it method is having one integer parameter compulsory one the one again integer parameter takes to a double parameter and integer variable number of arguments this is this syntax is acceptable in this case the first three arguments in a call to it are matched to the first three parameters then any remaining arguments are assumed to be long as variable parameters remember that variable arguments parameter must be the last for example if you are giving the variable number of parameters case in between it will give you error integer to it in a into b double c then variable parameters and then we just drop black it will give you error here there is an attempt to declare regular parameter after the variax parameter which is illegal there is one more restriction to be aware of there must be only one variax parameter if there cannot be more than one for example this declaration is also invalid integer a p double c integer variable number of parameters double more than variable number of parameters it will give you an error so two points you have to remember variable number of parameters part should be the last part of your method parameter call and second is there can be only only one variable argument number of arguments are allowed the attempt to declare the second variax parameter is illegal here is a revoke version of the test method that takes a regular argument and a variable length argument so static void we a test string message integer variable number of parameter d message plus v dot length dot context for int x colon b and printing and printing new line one variable argument then three variable arguments one two three variable test no variable arguments the output of this program is shown here one variable argument one then here message is compulsory and d is different so one variable argument then i will display three variable arguments i display and no variable argument zero content zero now how to overload varax method you can overload a method that takes variable length arguments for example the following program overloads v a test three times variable uh, r3 static void v a test int b so this is the variable number of parameters it is taking then i am printing variable test int colon number of arcs and contents like this for int x colon b, I am printing x and then v line. Now, static for v test, the variable number of arguments. So, this is overloaded. 
this is the first version for variable test having integer variable number of arguments and this is the second version of variable test it is having boolean of boolean variable parameter and then printing boolean values number of arguments length and contents and then boolean x colon b print x now we a test string message integer colon integer variable arguments b b a test string int message e dot length plus contents and this is having one string and one variable number of arguments so this is overloaded three times the first is having integer parameters one two three second is one string parameter two integer variable variable number of arguments and third is boolean true false and false the output is uh, we are testing number of arguments 3 contents 1 to 3 so this is the first one second is we are testing one string parameter and one integer variable number of arguments testing two contents 10 20 and we are test boolean testing is given as a string and 10 20 as integer number of arguments and lastly VA test boolean is having three values true false and false so it will display number of arguments three contents true false and false this program illustrates both ways that the variable uh, arguments method can be overloaded so it can have uh, different number of parameters different types of parameters it can be fixed number of arguments and uh, variable number of arguments plus combination of fixed and variable number of arguments. The types of its variable argument parameter can differ. This is the case for VA test int and VA test boolean. So type can differ and it causes the parameter to be treated as an array of a specified type. The uh, triple dot causes to be treated as array of that particular type. So int and three times dot will tell compiler this is an int array and boolean and three times dot will tell the compiler this is a boolean array. Therefore, just as you can overload methods by using different types of array parameters, you can overload various parameter by using different types of variable arguments. Java uses the type difference to determine which overloaded method to call. So depending upon the call, Java will decide whether this method to be called or this method or string and different type of variable number of arguments which is of type string to be called at runtime. The second way to overload varax method is to add normal parameter which is was done with VA test string comma int triple dot. In this case Java uses both the number of arguments and type of the arguments to determine which number of which method to call. Varax method can also be overloaded by non varax method. So, variable arguments method can be also overloaded by non variable method. VA test is a valid overload of VA test in the foregoing program. Now, varax and ambiguity. Somewhat unexpected errors can result when overloading a method that takes a variable length argument. So, unexpected errors can result with errors. These errors involve ambiguity because it is possible to create an ambiguous call to an overloaded varax method. For example, consider the following program varax overloading ambiguity and it will not compile. VA test with a num variable number of parameters, VA test integer triple colon number of arguments and contents. For int x colon b, I am printing that x and plus new line. Then static void VA test boolean for triple dot b. So this is the VA test for the uh, variable number of arguments those are integers and this is the VHS for variable number of arguments those are boolean. so here also I am printing then public static void main VA test 1 to 3 ok VA test 2 false false ok because boolean number of what var boolean variable number of arguments are ok and VA test colon error ambiguous this version is only invoked only when one integer argument is present. When two or more integer arguments are passed as variable test, 